Hello. Today, we're going to talk about the secret sauce to balancing creativity with performance. My name is Elad Gabison. I'm the creative leader at Iron Source, juggling between Playwork Studio, Luna Labs, and four of our squad, producing hundreds of interactive uh, creatives and video for our advertiser. A bit about myself, I started my career 15 years ago in the advertising world, then moved to the television as a screenwriter and a content uh, development, and on the last four years, specialized in the gaming industry. I want to start my talk, how to fail at scale. And let's start with the scale. We have a tradition here, and recently, just like in the police, I got my trophy for producing 10,000 creative. So I know about scale, and I know also about fail. And when I'm talking about fail, I'm not talking about the frustration feeling that we see a lot recently in our ecosystem in the user acquisition. And I'm not talking also about the fail scenario that in most of the cases and the genres, we see the probability to install reach when people fail in the ad. I'm talking about my personal fails. The idea I was sure 100% are going to crash the networks, but fail. And spoiler alert, if you are going to produce creative at scale, you are going to fail too. So today, I'm going to share with you all my secret sauce, best practice, and great ideas, but you just need to remember that all of them are only because there is a lot of fail behind them. So how to fail right? In order to fail right, you need to think right and to execute right. And I wanted to dedicate the first chapter of Think Right to the non-creative people people that feel that creativity is not running in their DNA or in their blood. Because I think if you are follow this structure, even non-creative people can balance between their ideas and the performance. The first step when to, you want to think right, you need to think according to the data. And you should remember, a game is not a clear canvas. You have a lot already of ideas and elements you can take inspired from them. Take a look on this example by uh, King's Group and Guns of Glory. When we try to crack the playable for this title, we just over and over and over watch the top creative uh, video. And when we saw this magic moment when the cannon is shooting on another ship, then we understand what should be the, the playable. You have some adaption when you are like taking ideas from a video to a playable, like adding this personality, this character, adding this black overlay or the headshot. But this is how you start your research. You're watching the current top creative. You see what is already performant and then take it step uh, further. The next step when you want to think right is to think according to the trends. And see this great example coming from the supersonic team. So on V1, they created a playable with the original mechanic. You need just to slide in order to change the wheels and pass those obstacles. But when they reach to version 6, they want to take inspired from other trends in the industry, other mechanics, and they saw this drawing mechanic. And they try a playable with this drawing mechanic, and you see the results. The playable scaled by 45%. You see the IPM was rising by 5%. The CVR was growing by 34%. And the most important, we didn't damage the LTV. And this is the most important uh, metrics here because we try a new approach of the creative, but then we measure the quality of the users and it stay the same. The next idea when you want to think right is to think like a game designer, to think about the next feature you want to implement in the game, to take the original mechanic and just to add a juice, a story, a sense of urgency maybe, and hook your users. And you see the example on the left side. This is a, a game by Rovio, Dream Blast, and we took the same original blast mechanic just add those pigs running after red, and this pass, and the movement of the character, and this was one of the leading uh, playables. And on the right side, you see the new uh, game by Dream Games, Royal Match. And you see again, we are using the same original mechanic of match tree. We just add the element that Robert the King is in prison, asking for help, and you need to swipe in order like, to uh, help him get out of jail and you need just to swipe in order to release the key and help him to get away. So let's summarize this chapter from gameplay and beyond. So basically, when you want to think right, 
you need to start from the original gameplay, from the original top creative and current creative that are running, then to take a zoom out and see what is running uh, in the industry, what kind of trend you see on the user acquisition or other mechanics, and then to take another zoom out and think like a game designer. What will be the next feature you want to implement? Try to reach to a new idea and then to balance yourself and see if you don't damage the LTV and the quality of the users. And I'm starting every morning by watching a lot of creative and external company. And I really like what the in-house studio of Plerix is doing recently, how they are like taking those mini games into the user acquisition campaign and implement them back in the, in the app in order like to keep the right retention. And since we are like in a virtual uh, conference, I was able to reach to Kate Blanchett with the exhibition and the movie Manifesto. And let's spend one minute with Kate Blanchett explaining to us that nothing is original. Now I want you to select only those things to steal from that speak directly to your soul. All right? Now if you do this, your work and your theft will be authentic all right now authenticity is invaluable okay now originality is non-existent so don't bother trying to conceal your thievery you can celebrate it you know if you feel like it but in any case i want you to remember what jean-luc goddard said all right all right You can't argue with someone is bringing Jean-Luc Godard to his presentation. Step two is how to execute right. How you taking those thinking right and the concept and push this to production. And I want to dedicate this chapter to the creative people back. So it's really important to understand that execution is a long process, but it's worth to wait you really want to spend time on the tiny details, the extra mile of your creative. And people ask me how much time it's going to take this extra mile of the execution. So I will say around 20% of the total time for this specific production, you really want to spend some time on the particles and those idea to run this as an internal test and to get some feedback from people out of this specific process. And you see this example coming from King, and this is like a retargeting campaign. So the idea was just to swipe between those candies to the character, the famous character of King. And you see, it will take some time during the execution to decide what will be the color of the board, what will be the, the character will, you're going to implement in the, in the playbill. So spend time on the execution. It's, it's going to really affect on your performance. And when we are talking about performance, you need to balance between the micro decision and the macro A-B test. And let's start with the micro decision. And this is like an old topic. We are talking for the last two and three years about all the disaster uh, creative and the sense of urgency. It's really a tiny details you want to spend time during the execution on this. And you can bring those sense of urgency, those micro decision, small micro decision in a different way. So, Sense of urgency can come from the creative side, can come just from adding a timer to your creative. The sense of urgency can come by the emotion side, by the expression. And you remember Austin or other characters in the industry shouting, help me, at the beginning of a playable or a video. This is create the hook and the connection between the viewer and the, the, the ad. And you see the example on the, on the right side for the game of Supercell, the Brawl Star. So the test was if the, the opponent will attack the hero one after another or will attack him simultaneously. And the time to complete when the three opponent was attacking simultaneously was much better and really helped to push this, uh, this creative and the performance of this one. So see how those micro decision and the sense of urgency affecting on the performance. Next one is a great example by King's Group and State of Survival, and let's go deep to the inner data of this playable. So the difference between the two config was how fast the zombies are running out, the red borders flashing to increase the pressure, and the time between unlocking the gun on the bottom of uh, UI. 
and you see the result. The sense of urgency creative, the IPM was increased by 7%. We saw a 37% increase in the completion rate. And this is when I'm talking about RV. And when I'm switching to interstitial, where the time slot is much shorter, so again, we see 43% de decrease in the completion rate. And it, this is really important to the performance to measure those tiny details and the timing of the playable, and it's going to affect your uh, performance and your creative. So we talk a lot about those micro decisions, but it's really important for creative people and people during your production to understand you want to control your creativity. And this is a great example for this coming from Hunter Assassinate. So you see this green, uh, green screen when the character is running with the title brilliant. This was just the transition between level one and level two in the playable. But when we opened the data and saw all the numbers, we saw a 20% drop specifically in the, this green screen moment, meaning people thought the ad is over. They saw the X button and decided to go back to the original uh, game they are like playing. And the V2 was really easy for us. We just deleted this green screen with the animation of the girl. And from 20% drop on the playable, we saw only 1% drop. So take care of those micro decisions. But remember, you really want to control your creativity and get the right decision during the production. Another great example of small and quick tweaks can really change significantly your performance is coming from the playable of Rolik and Hair Challenge. So when we pull the data, we understand people fail after seven seconds. And this is not enough time on RV to, to fill the, the, the app, to, to enjoy and interact with this. So in a small tweaks of only two days of work, the team create V1 and a half. And they add this like nice feature. At the beginning, you see the character is blinking. Okay, so basically she failed. And we gave an extra life for the playable, for the user is playing this. He can continue and play and enjoy more of this playable and then to fail, okay? Because we talk about this. Failing in this kind of genre is really help to the performance. And you see the number. The extra life config create increase of 40% on the IPM, we grow also the CVR, and I think the chain reaction come from improving the CVR, meaning people came to the store, and this is the most important click, remember, came to the store and really decided that this playable was enough engaging, and they really want to install and enjoy from this uh, app. And we talk a lot about all the tiny details and the micro decision you are taking during the production. And let's move to the other side and talk about the macro A-B test. So basically, we are in the industry. It's not like UX, UI, you're just going to change the color of the button or the shape of the pointer. You really want to make a dramatic change on your A-B test. On the left side, a playable by Voodoo, okay? And we know this is like, uh, this genre is like more character uh, related. So they change the leading character. And this is like a totally different experience if this is like a frisbee uh, boy or a football player is like playing this game. And this is like a macro A-B test. You can challenge yourself and create an easy level or a hard level. And most important right now is like to go to the unity and try to change the point of view of the camera. So you can take a, a runner game and you can do this over the shoulder or, or you can zoom a bit out and create a side view and this is a macro A-B test and can change significantly your performance on this specific creative. Another great example coming from the supersonic team of a macro A-B test is for this Mad Dog uh, app. So you see on the right side, the, the pointer with the gesture, jump uh, with the gray area of the city. On the right side, they took a totally different approach with this crazy 3D character, jump to, tap to jump, and it's really contrast with all the Egyptian background and those color. And you see the numbers, really significant numbers. And of course, the one with the 77% on the engagement rate win the, the campaign because this is like a basic funnel. More people will go to your playable and start to play. There is more chances people will end this playable and install the, the app. So take a macro A-B test during your process in the production. And I think what it's important to understand when we are talking about macro A-B test is this in our industry, the quantity creates the quality. Meaning 
At the beginning of a campaign, I don't think anyone in our industry, even with 10 years of experience, can say which creative is going to take the lead. And this is a long process on the soft launch we made with Big Fish on Evermerge. And only after four playables and 18 configs, we clarified for ourselves which one is the leading character you want to use, what kind of element you want to merge, and even to test a dramatic macro A-B test, what will happen if you will start your playable, not even with merge mechanic. So the quantity creates the quality. Try a lot of variation, try to challenge yourself, and then you will get the secret sauce for your specific app. So for those of you who wait until here, I promise the secret sauce for balancing between creativity and the performance. And I hope you all understand and get some secret sauce from my presentation. And if not, this is another fail I will take on myself. But basically, you own the secret sauce. Your internal team with a lot of testing and knowledge they are going to recruit from themselves will identify the secret sauce for your specific game and app. And look at the difference between the genre. I can, send the I can say the black overlay is the right approach when you want to start a playable. But this is relevant most of the time for the inner purchase. Because on the hyper casual, you really want to see these bright colors. Okay? People like to interact immediately with the app and understand the mechanic really fast. So there is a huge difference between the genres. Only you can know what is like the special secret sauce and the the spell, the right spell for your app and uh, game. A great example for the never ending story and finding the right balance between creativity and performance came from Blackout Bingo by Skills. And they, they took for them a long time to find the right playable for this uh, audience. But when they find this great playable, we took a step back and we tried to measure from the supply side what is like the source of the people, the quality people we brought to this, uh, to this app? And we identified the, the area of casino, slot machine, and lucky puzzle as one of the great sources. So again, we took the best playable, we just changed the design and add this Las Vegas style and all the blinking lights, and this become the great and the top playable for them, and then it can run for like years now. So again, Sometimes it will take you time to find the best playable. Don't give up after one playable or two playable. Try until you reach to your top playable and then start a small iteration by exploring the data and then you will find your balance and your secret sauce for your specific app. The last one, a great example how to fail right, is coming from Rovio with this small town murder. And we have a huge argument in the studio what will be the top performance, if it will be the, the right execution to go to the day mode or to the night mode. But I have to say, both of them was totally fail. Okay? So sometimes you fail. But what we made, we just used our resource effectively. And we took the top performance from those fail playable, the day mode, and we convert him to a video. And this became one of the top video. So again, even if you fail, Explore the data, see what kind of hook and insight you can get out of it, and try a different approach for the next time. So let's wrap this session. How to fail right? In order to fail right, you need to think right and to execute right. And when you want to think right, you need to think according to the data, to the current top creative and top performance running for your specific app. The next step is to think from the trends to take a wider view on the top charts and what's running uh, in the industry and take decision from this. And the last one is to think like a game designer, to think about the next feature you want to implement in the game and then to balance between this new idea to the quality of the users coming from this uh, creative. The next step is to execute right, to take the idea and push this to the production. And then you need to understand you want to spend some time between the concept to execution on the extra mile with your team. Then you need to take care slowly on the micro decision, create this sense of urgency and balance yourself in terms of creative. Think from a point of view of a player and not from a point of view of creative guy. And then just to create a macro A-B test, something dramatically you're going to see the change. And this is basically the secret sauce. You and your in-house team can define your best process and how to balance between the creativity and the performance in order to reach to a quality users. 
And again, for any question, please consult with us at Iron Source. We will be glad to help. Thanks. I'm going to drink some water now. <laughs>